So what was really interesting to me today and just within the last, I don't know, four or five years, when I started clearing my gut, I noticed all the different duality programming and the duality conflicts that always seem to just take over the landscape in politics, religion, and science. And so you have to understand we're in, we're in a spiritual war, okay? Those that are aware know this and are trying their best to try to win the war, but you have to understand this. There's no way to win a war when you always have the dualities of, of life and death, black and white. I mean, there can't be too much or too little of any one thing. There's always that dance, okay? And there's always going to be that dance. That's why you can't always assume that your life is always going to be easy and fun and perfect and, and you know, successful. That with every success, there is a failure somewhere. You hope that you stay high on the top, but if you're always rising, rising, rising and not falling, something is going to give. Just like with the market. The market always corrects itself when there's too much, when there's so much money going into one area, like the mortgage crisis, the, you know, all the different loans and whatever. Eventually, someone's going to want to go and correct the market. Just like your body, when there's such an imbalance, at some point, there's got to be a correction. Okay. And so this is what I've come to understand. And this is, you know, it's and, and this is also in religion too. When you're constantly preaching Christianity and Jesus and good, 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 the evil forces are gonna try to balance you out because you're like, you know, and, and, and I don't even know why it happens, why it's a must, but it's just it's a it's balance. It's a duality of balance that I can't even begin to figure out where, why it even exists, why we have to even deal with that. But then I understand it on a on a macro level when it comes to cohabitating on a place where there's limited resources and that you have to allow resources to develop, allow enough time for resources to develop. So when there's so many consumers and the resources take time for it to develop, then you then you realize that in order for life to exist you have to balance the consumers so the resources don't get used up and then extinction so i guess that's i mean that's the science aspect of it but still i mean whoever developed the world that we live in as far as physics you know to even put it into words is just like so crazy it's i mean in, in a lot of ways it's kind of like magic okay so that's the thing with 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 if you're taking a side okay and this is where i can see i understand where magic because words can be magic sound can be magic movement can be magic because it creates a chemical process of which has reactions and actions that are simultaneously going on to oblivion and so so this thing with taking a side like with christianity if you're going to be so christian then you're going to have satanic people try to take you down or try to get you to convert, you know, or, or you're going to be so focused on the opposite. One of the two. Okay. And, and that's, that is such the weirdest thing. And so I can see why now when I'm watching TV and it's all about, you know, and I'm watching stuff about, you know, the Catholic and the Vatican, it's always these, it's always like these churches that are so like, creepy and the nuns are really creepy and then you have all these demons that are like hanging around i'm like what is the deal with this with the catholic church and all these these demons and it's not that they're dealing with demons they're just they're recognizing both sides so you're gonna get a very condensed one side point of view in horror movies and then you get the other side the light side like little house on the prairie and the care bears and I don't know, Barbie and, and all of that light and, you know, and, and just kind of like the fantasy world, the unicorns, right? And so, you know, you, can, you can't see, you know, the devil with the unicorns unless you're trying to show the duality of balance. And so what people focus on is what they are promoting. And so, and so it's interesting. So then what I figured out is that 
if you don't take a side in all the stupid trivial shit like the anti-vax, pro-vax, mask, no mask, I don't know, whatever, Democrat, Republican, all that crap, and you take a side with life versus death, then that's a macro level way to understand the laws of life and the laws of death. And then you take yourself out of the war so you're not being sacrificed for somebody else's enlightenment. You're not being sacrificed for somebody else's way of getting ahead. When you take yourself out of the war, you're not being consumed by the demons who are looking for that loose energy, that negative energy that they just feed off of, feed off of. And so I see a lot of you are still kind of exhibiting that loose energy, that negative energy, because for whatever reason, you hold a lot of that negative energy within you, and it's only, it's coming out of your pores. It's coming out of every orifice. And so all I can say is, can you convert that energy where, yeah, you'll experience the highs and you'll experience the lows and everything is okay with the highs and the lows. Nothing is wrong with that. Just make sure you have a stable foundation and that you don't have too much expectation or you're not expecting anything. I mean, you want to have a good balance of expectations, a good balance of the highs and lows, the good balance of just food and water and your movements and whatever and 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 measure that have specific measurable results because yes when you see people that are taking their hormones and trying to keep themselves at a certain level of their hormones like all happy all the time then when things don't go their way they crash so hard and then it becomes like this whole bipolar type of episode where the happiness they once had now is like now there has to be a balance. And so the sadness. And so then anyways, the whole bloodlines and stuff, then I realized with the whole bloodlines, there is a duality in the bloodlines. Like I'm trying to look for information on the 13 bloodlines because I'm going to be talking about them in my book because I have to. It's part of the Greek mythology. It's part of the New World Order, it's part of the World Economic Forum. It's so interesting that Switzerland is neutral. They're not subjected to the Hegelian dialect of the Illuminati Wars, which is basically, it's just the duality. And I and I didn't really understand why Switzerland is like the land of neutrality, but they're run, I guess, by the Illuminati. They're not subject to all the things that we're subject to in America and the UK and Australia and all the different places. And so this is where I want you guys to know that you don't have to be sacrificed for somebody else's war or somebody else's, you know, enlightenment. That you can be the enlightened ones, okay, if I must put it like that, to be so bold to say, okay, enlightenment. That you give people the choice. They're going to believe or disbelieve you and lead their life the way they do. And they are going to be a type of sacrifice to the community, to in, in your life too. And you don't want to look at it that way, but in a way it's like that. And so... And so, and so, yeah, so I, you know, so I, I guess the Bundy bloodline is a very satanic bloodline, but that's because, I mean, look at, you know, Ted Bundy. I mean, he's part of all that. And I, I posted, um, an article that, okay, it's, I don't know what Ganino.com is, whatever. It doesn't even matter because we know there's 13 bloodlines. We know that the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers, they do run our society. They are part of the 13 bloodlines. Are they really that divine? You know, if they're not living indefinitely, how divine could they be if they're mortal? And so what the jilly juice is the immortality aspect that is going to supersede some of these bloodlines that are satanic. And so the satanic ones are going to stay satanic and people are still going to deal with them and their all of their different policies and procedures that you know are being rolled out in legislation in your government. Okay, so you know that's going to happen, but then now that you're aware of it, you don't have to fall victim to it. And so that's the Freemason choice where they give you chocolate or vanilla. Chocolate, let's say chocolate is Satan and, and vanilla is is Lucifer, the knowledge, the light. They're going to give that to you, like, just like the red pill and the blue pill, whatever you want to call it. And you choose one, you can choose to live in oblivion and live in ignorance and live in in blissful ignorance and all that and then be subject to being sacrificed to somebody else's war whatever it is whether it's a biochemical war or it's a physical war on a land like let's say the you the, the the um 
Ukraine and, and Russia, because we're seeing things build up. You know, right now we're seeing Israel and Iran, and Iran tensions, and you know all this is going to happen. So you know wars are going to happen. Be very happy that you're able to be to have a choice. You don't. You volunteer to go to the military, or you don't. You volunteer to go out and be an activist and whatever, or you don't. You stay home and stay safe and expand your brain and body, mind, and spirit, or you don't. You go out there and you risk it all because you want to be free, whatever that means. Okay, and so there must be a balance. And so I get it. I mean, it's a trippy thing to get. And so yeah, so when I, when I when I'm not trying to knock the Christians, but I want to say that the Christians are inviting Satan in their home if they're not doing the jilly juice. I get being Christian, but if you're not doing jilly juice and then you go through a death process, you are inviting Satan into your world, whether you know it or not. And so this is where not being hypocritical and understanding the laws of life and the laws of death so the words don't manipulate you and program you into a way of thinking and being. Because yes, I'm writing about that words are spells. They program people, you know, beliefs and actions are programming. No different than a computer. Humans are no different than a computer. When you can go and manipulate the biochemistry and then you reinforce belief systems by using words to program people and using triggers, that's how you get people to then act upon whatever intention you want and that's our society we have basic programming like go to work go to school do whatever and then we have very intense programming where people are very specialized in their field or they've programmed themselves to understand something hey Ellie Mae and so once you understand that you can program yourself to stay alive you can program yourself to be successful in whatever that means not always go after the money, 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 because when you rise, 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 eventually you will fall, 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 because you're not going to take care of yourself. When you're all about the money, what's going to happen is you're so busy taking somebody else's coins and taking somebody else's energy, but you're not developing your own, then you're, you know, then the energy is going to run out and the money's going to stop. So this is a balance of also about money as well. The riches are what you can do to be self-sufficient to stay alive and keep the balance and so and so I'm like I didn't want to say which bloodline was satanic but the Bundy one obviously is I mean that is unmistakable but every everyone else I can't say that the Astors I can't say that the uh, Rockefellers and the Rothschilds are really satanic because they are giving you life and there's that balance of plus and minus that always must be juggled at the micro level as well as the macro level, the wars, the activism, the riots. People are at each other's throats over stupid shit like, oh God, you're going to get a vaccine. Oh God, you're not. And that's right there, somebody else's war. And then you're being sacrificed to take part in that war. That's just to understand. Human sacrifice is not just, you know, throwing somebody in a volcano or taking out their heart on an altar in, in Sumer. No, it's also where you're giving up your energy to something that gives you no return. When you're sacrificing your energy that you're not getting a return on, that's a type of human sacrifice that also chips away at your soul little by little and you're not doing anything to regenerate. Human sacrifice comes in so many forms. And so we have this impression that human sacrifice is like, yeah, being sacrificed on an altar, but no, it comes in forms of activism. It comes in forms of where you are being such a good mother and a good husband and a good wife and you're just giving, 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 not asking for anything in return and no one's really giving you any return. They're just taking and taking and then they take, they, they just suck the energy out of you until there's nothing left. And that's another human sacrifice. And so this is, this is the most amazing thing when you're on the JJs and you clear your gut, you can finally see the world the way it actually is. Not the way the fantasy that someone told you or what you wanted to believe, but the way the world actually is. And that right there is freedom. Above all else, above all the patriotic bullshit and all the other crap that you get lost in with the left versus right, the real freedom is seeing the world for what it is and knowing when to sidestep all the bullshit. And then you stay safe. You stay home, you stay safe, and you figure out the risk levels to do whatever you want to do. And then you own your 
responsibility, take accountability for what you do out there. And so when things don't go the way you expect, hey, you took the risk. Okay, you can't blame anyone but yourself. And so that right there is the freedom. And so, yeah, the jelly juice is the light. It is the light that not everyone's going to understand. And so if you understand jelly juice, understand that pain is healing, and you have to go through the process, eat the food, don't be afraid of all the different GMO or whatever, and you learn how to align yourself with your microbiome, you'll just watch everything and be like, oh my God, this is so predictable. But then you can still enjoy your life, you can still enjoy the arts and humanities, and you know, learn different skills and be successful and really learn how to articulate yourself the way you want to. Because I know humans are dying to articulate in the way they really want to. And it's so difficult because you don't have the, the, the alignment of the body, mind, and spirit to, to be able to articulate the way you want to. And so it comes out in weird ways. And I completely get it. I've had weird ways of communicating because I, I had so much of the energy and so much of the, of the emotion that I couldn't put it to words. And sometimes some of you guys that do talk to me through like um, private messenger with, with the recordings, with, with your testimonies or whatever, your, like your voices are, 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 is, is so beautiful and so amazing that I, there's no words that would actually be able to describe some of your voices. And so, you know, so it's sometimes it's hard to really express the feelings you have inside that are so intense because sometimes words just can't express it. So it, 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 it can be a source of frustration, but that's when you get your gut cleared and you can align your body, mind, and spirit and find a way to say things to get your point across. And that does take time. That takes a lot of time. It takes getting through your physical ailments. Okay? And once you get through your physical ailments, then you take yourself out of the war and you don't become somebody else's sacrifice. And that's what I kind of knew a long time ago when people were taking sides and they were just allowing people to suck the energy out of them on a daily basis. And I'm like, what is the point? Why are you fighting against something that you have no control over and that no matter what, someone's going to make their choice, their predispositions, their choices in life absolutely have no bearing on your belief system. Why are you trying to save someone else who gives a fuck about themselves and about you? And that's what I figured out. It, it was tough for me to figure out. I want to save the world. And let me tell you, half the world doesn't want to be saved. So I'd take my hands off and just offer information in an intelligent way. And it's taken five years to do this. I had to get out of my emotions to be able to understand this and to realize that you can't save anyone else, but you can only offer information and they'll take it or leave it. And then you find a way to speak to people's listening. So that way, if you want them to give them, if you want to give them a choice on life versus death, whatever that means to you, then you will be able to articulate it in a way that they get it. But you know, when, when you're, when you're constantly trying to be conflicted with somebody, they're going to push back, you're going to push back and it just becomes then this, and there is no advancement in evolution because you're always fighting against something. And so, you know, so that's the thing is to understand that you don't have to be a sacrifice to somebody else. You don't have to sacrifice yourself to, for somebody else or to somebody else. You can stay alive and you're going to know there's going to be human sacrifices out there, whether it's in a macro level, whether it's a war or whether it's people getting caught up like a war, like with guns and tanks, or it's a war of ideas where you're on the, on Facebook spewing at Zuckerberg or spewing at the left and spewing at the right saying you're all stupid, you're all this. And in the meantime, you're not developing yourself. You're not regenerating. And so then you become a human sacrifice to that argument, which doesn't have to be. And yes, Jerry Booth, knowledge is king. Be the light, be the Lucifer. Because what prompted me to talk about this as far as the Christians who always invite Satan in their home because they're allowing themselves to die and they've taken a side. Someone tried to, to convert me today when I did that video about is Jesus actually Lucifer on Easter. I know, a little bit blasphemous, but it was very appropriate. And that maybe Jesus is Lucifer, but a modified version based upon a controlled Hegelian type of, of, of a Lucifer that allows people to die anyways. 
And so, you know, I'm saying, you know, and she and this lady who was a very, very Christian, lady's like, oh, you should read the Bible because Satan is trying to deceive you into thinking that Lucifer is a good thing and da 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 da. And I'm just like, no, Satan and Lucifer reside on the same plane. They're very diametrically opposed, opposed, but they are necessary when it comes to balance. And so now you guys have a choice to stay alive, stay safe, deal with your predispositions, balance out the positive and negative, the salt and the sugar, and then align it with all the different fatty acid, amino acid, prohormones and minerals and your microbiome with the viruses, parasites, protozoa, proteins, fungus and bacteria. And you stay alive and you be knowledgeable, be exemplif exemplify productivity, peaceful and just be that's it make your goals achieve your dreams whatever they are achieve your goals and just relax and watch how everything is going to play out because it's going to be very interesting and then listen to the indicators and you know that with this with this trial there's going to be some political unrest so watch where you go watch where you travel Stay home and stay safe if you can. All right. I got to go. Take care of stuff. Bye.